In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase to clue in. When you clue into something, it means you've heard some small facts about something and then suddenly you realize something has happened. Uh, Jen's at market right now and I'm home today. I think Oscar has finally clued in that Jen is has gone. He's checked outside a few times today. He's gone to look in the flower field and he can't find her. But I think now, because he looks really sad, I think he's finally clued in that Jen is at market. She'll be home in a little bit. So to clue in means you realize something after you find a few clues. Maybe there's a few things that let you come to the conclusion that something is a certain way. You've clued in to that fact. The other phrase I want to teach you today is to not have a clue. We use this to talk about someone in a very mean-spirited, negative way when they are just not understanding something. So you might have a boss like this, a boss who keeps giving you instructions that don't make sense and you, you can't help but do the job poorly because your boss just doesn't have a clue. When you say your boss does not have a clue, it means that maybe your boss doesn't really understand the job you do. Um, sometimes you might have a coworker who does not have a clue um, and they just don't understand how things work. So to review, to clue in means to figure something out after getting a few little clues. You know what clues are? Like when the police investigate a crime, they look for clues, little hints as to what had happened. So when you clue in, you finally understand something. And then if you say that someone does not have a clue, it means they don't understand what's going on. But hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Modags. At minute 326, yeah, that's a cool little spot indeed. If only you could hang a hammock there. Oops, I said it, hee <laughs> hee. Sorry, Mr. Bob. I guess I've been watching far too many Canadians lately and I might have started to pick up some of their passive aggressiveness. And my response, hint taken. I clued in to what Mode was talking about. Let's see what I can come up with in August for a video slash hammock holder. Um, so Mode sent me a gift last year. It was a hammock and uh, I never got around to actually setting it up. Um, I didn't hang it from a couple of trees. There are some nice trees on my property. Um, I was going to build like a little frame to hold it and I never got around to that as well. But I think I'm going to try that in a couple of weeks. I, I want to do a lesson on tools and woodworking and uh, I have an idea for something to build. I had this idea last year and I promised this last year already, uh, but it will happen after this project's done. You might be wondering, Bob, what are you doing <laughs> to your house? Well, we had some drainage problems here. And so what I've done is I've dug a ditch all the way out to there. Let me give you a little bit better view of this. So I've dug a ditch. I'm not quite done yet, but I've dug a ditch all the way out to here where the ground is lower. And my plan is actually uh, to dig that ditch even a little bit deeper yet. And then uh, that will have all the water drain back this way. Uh, and then if you look behind me, I've also been kind of clearing out the stone and I'm trying to get it to slope ever so slightly away from the house. It used to do that, but I think over time, the concrete in front of my house kind of settled and the driveway kind of everything, the water was going the wrong way. So I'm trying to fix that. Similar to how I put some stone in front of the barn entrance for Jen. Uh, my plan is to get this all fixed up in the next week and then it's hammock time. <laughs> it should be fun. Anyways, thanks Mode for the comment. Thanks to all of you for watching. I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you in a few days with another short English lesson and uh, I'll give you an update on that project, hopefully. Bye.